Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I hope you've had a chance to look at my Arduino Nano ESP32 review and that board, because it has the ESP32 processor on it, supports ESP Now, a way for two boards to communicate wirelessly without having to connect to a Wi-Fi network. You can also use it from within Arduino because of course this is an Arduino based board. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive into ESP now. Now on a normal Wi-Fi network, uh, devices communicate via a Wi-Fi access point, a wireless router, and it acts as the central hub for communication between devices. So here's an example. If we've got an Arduino board here with Wi-Fi on it, it talks to the hub, the hub works out where it's got to go and it sends the outward packets to uh, to the other board. Now, of course, it will also send them down the Ethernet port. That's why it, it's a router. But they talk via the hub like that. Now, the question is, can uh, you get two devices to talk to each other if there is no Wi-Fi network or you don't want to connect to the Wi-Fi network without a router? So basically, you want board to board communication over a wireless protocol. Well, of course, there are some solutions. Bluetooth being a fairly uh, obvious one is obviously used quite a lot. If you were prepared to put wires between them, you could use serial, I squared C, or, and of course, this is the subject of today's video, you could use ESP Now. So ESP Now is a wireless communication protocol defined by Espressive, which enables direct communication between devices without the need of a router. And it's supported in ESP's Expressive's uh, chipsets. That's the 8266, the ESP32, 32S, and the 32C. And the Arduino Nano has got an ESP32S on it, so it is supported by those boards. And so you can see now that we can get communication between these two over the air using ESP Now. So here on the left, we have a uh, what's called a network stack. This is how a normal networking works using TCP IP. At the very top, you've got the application layer. So that's things like HTTP, for example. You want to open up a web page, you send a HTTP request, and then that goes down through various layers until ultimately it has to go across some form of uh, medium, a physical layer, whether that's an ethernet cable or radio waves. And in between, you, for example, here you've got TCP, UDP. That's one layer. IP is at another layer. And basically you take this request and it goes down through the different layers which add different things like for example with TCP the connection has to be made and you're guaranteed that the packets get there and you're guaranteed in what order they get there and so on and I've got a video of course about UDP here on this channel uh, slightly different but the same idea you need to have a, a way until finally when you get the actual physical layer how they're being transmitted then the packets are sent and then they can be rebuilt back at the other end to give you your HTTP request now ESP now sits in the top part of the three layers in fact it places those top three layers. So the data link layer and the physical layer remain, but all the other stuff where TCP IP was, HTTP was, all that's gone and that's where ESP now fits. Now it works by using a thing inside of 802.11, that's the Wi-Fi standard, called an action frame. And an action frame is just a frame, one a uh, block of data that's of just only a few bytes long that gets sent and an action's meant to happen. Now in here, according to the uh, vendor specific uh, action frame, you can put whatever you like in this little payload part here. So there's always other things here like the MAC address that tell you where it's being sent from, where it needs to go. And then there is this pa this payload here that, ex that is what you want to be in there. And when you use the vendor specific action frame, this data can be anything you want. And in ESP now, if you zoom that bit out, you get a bit of information here about its length and ID. And then basically you get what's left over is enough space to put up to 250 bytes. And those 250 bytes you can define however you want. They get carried inside of the vendor specific action frame. That goes over the physical layer and the data layer of Wi-Fi and then it's received at the other end. Now because of this, because you're not using TCP IP, you're not using HTTP, you're using a much much lower protocol, there are some uh, pros and cons. So there's only a maximum payload of 250 bytes. If you want to send 251 bytes, you can't. You need to send two separate ESP now packets across. Addressing is not using IPv4, IPv6 or anything like that, it's using the MAC address. 
the physical address that's burnt into every uh, Wi-Fi chip, but it does work without a router, so you don't need to connect to a Wi-Fi network, and it in fact coexists with normal TCP IP traffic over uh, a Wi-Fi network. They exist together, not exclusive. But as I said, there's no fragmentation, so you can't split, doesn't automatically split data over more than 250 bytes. If you want to do that, you have to do it yourself. There's no flow control. There's no guarantee of the order. There's no guarantee that the packets even get delivered. There's none of this stuff that you would get that TCP IP give you. It just sends out the packet and you hope that because it's in Wi-Fi range and it's listening, it gets the packet and that's it. And there's no like, did you get it? No, I didn't. Oh, I'll send it again. Oh, there's someone else. Trying. None of that. It just sends it out. And of course, the very low level Wi-Fi stuff is taken care of in the those first two layers, but anything from a higher networking level is not taken care of at all. But for sending small amounts of data within a certain range, uh, not at a very high uh, uh, speed, at a very high bandwidth, so for example, turn a light on and off, or configure some colors in a in a in a strip an LED strip or you know uh, send a temperature any of these things for smart home stuff this is perfect because 250 bytes uh, in a local area without a Wi-Fi network is perfect so you can use ESP now from within inside the Arduino uh, IDE so that makes it really easy to use I'll very quickly go through some of the calls ESP now in it well that's a pretty obvious call that's how you initialize it Data must be transmitted only after Wi-Fi has started, so it's recommended you start Wi-Fi before. So you need to have the Wi-Fi at least set into the right mode and initialized. ESP now add peer, adds a device to the paired list, which you need to do before you can send data to it. So you need to know the MAC address. So basically you initialize it, you add the other device you're talking to via its uh, MAC address, and then you call ESP now send to send the data. And also you need a function, which is a callback function, which is basically called when the data is sent. So there is a function called ESP now register send back, send callback. Okay, and that will register the function that will get called automatically when data is sent. If there's a lot of data to send, call ESP now send multiple times and only send the data after the callback has been triggered. So don't just overload it wait for it to send, wait for the callback to be called, send your next uh, bunch of data if that's what your application needs to do. And just like there is a send uh, callback, there's also a receive callback. So on the receiving device, when data comes in, you don't need to be sniffing the packets, that all happens for you. And when data is ready, it will get called, the receive callback function will get called and then you can process that data saying, all oh, right, here's the data I was waiting for. Uh, and you know it's only gonna be up to 250 bytes. Uh, it comes in this one frame as we've talked about and it gets automatically called. So actually the receiver side is actually really, really easy as we'll see in some code we'll look at in a moment. So here is a rough way how you do the setup for a sender, the sending device. If you notice here, I've got this variable which is called the secondary. That's the information we're keeping about the other device. Here is the MAC address that I've hard coded. You turn on Wi Fi in station mode, you set the channel number, you call ESP in it, you register the uh, send the callback function, which isn't displayed here, but it's a function that just handles the fact that the data has been sent. You copy over the address from the MAC address into this secondary variable, into its address. You set the channel, you say it's not encrypted, and then you just say add in the uh, secondary uh, device to the list, to the peer list. So if you do those commands, uh, obviously it, here we could have error checking and a lot more other fancy stuff, but this is the basic guts of what you need. Then you will have a device that's defined and added to uh, your peer list, which you can then send to. And then in the loop, what you do is ESP now send, you send it to that address. And then in this case, I'm sending uh, a sensor value that's been set somewhere else in the program, temperature sensor, whatever you want to do. I'm just sending it across, waiting three seconds, then sending it again. So every three seconds, this action frame will get sent across in ESP now with that data and the receiver will pick it up. So the sending part's really easy. Once you've got the setup working, Wi-Fi enabled, ESP enabled, you add in the peer, just sending the data is itself, it's really, really simple. And at the receiver end, it's a what much, much more simple. Set the Wi-Fi again, set the channel, call the initialization, then register a function that gets called when the data is received. In this case, it would look at the, the sensor value and then decide what it's gonna do with it, whether it's controlling a fan, switching something on, displaying something on display, whatever it is, it, it would do that. And in fact, the receiver loop, you don't need to do anything. Uh, uh, there's no nothing to do here because uh, the callback function gets called automatically. It's not polled here in the loop. 
it just gets called automatically. So really, really easy. The receiver is much easier than the sender, but together they're pretty easy to understand. But the big question is, is how do you get the MAC address of the other device? It's all very well in a nice laboratory situation and you kind of just, I know the MAC address of this one, I know the MAC address of that one. Now, of course, you can run a script on the secondary device that prints out its MAC address of the serial port, and then you can hard code it in the sender. That's all great, as I said, for a lab setup. But what do you want to do in an actual real environment? Well, one trick you can use is that you can set the, the secondary device to act as an access point and it can then broadcast an SSID. And in fact, when you broadcast an SSID, you also broadcast a BSSID, and the BSSID is the MAC address. So basically, by starting up in access point mode, you're actually broadcasting your MAC address. And then you can scan for SSDs with, let's say, a certain prefix, uh, and then you can say, oh, this is my device, this is my other device in my network, I'm gonna pair up uh, with that. So for example, here we've got the secondary device, it's turned into access point, it's, it's got an SSID of ESP now, pick me. Oh, pick me, oh, pick me. Uh, and then the other device, what it does is it scans for nearby networks, and when it sees one that starts with ESP now, it just fishes out the MAC address, and then it starts the two talking to each other. And so how would you do that in the code? Well, in the receiver, let's starting there, you need to set it up into access point mode, soft AP, using the ESP now and then the MAC address. You can actually put anything like in there, like pick me, and then a, a password, doesn't matter, because you're not gonna connect to it. All you're interested in is that while it's doing this broadcast, you're actually getting its MAC address. And then you just do the initialization like we've done in the other ones. And then for the sender, you need to have this function kind of scan for secondary, scan for networks, whatever you wanna call it. And it uses the Wi-Fi scan networks function from Arduino. And basically, if you look here, it says, look at the SSID and see if it starts with ESP now. If it does, then fish out, here's the BSSID, fish out the BSSID and copy that as the MAC address. So it's pretty simple. Now, of course, you can do that with multiple devices. If there are multiple devices scanning with ESP now, pick me, pick me one, pick me two, or ESP now and the MAC address, or whatever system you want to use, you can go through and, and, and keep an information about all of them and then start sending lots of different information around. You can also use the signal strength, that's the RSSI, to see that it's actually a nearby device. So maybe if you had a button on it that you press to say, I want to now go into pairing mode. The other one says, okay, I'm now going to scan for networks, but I want it to be really close by, not one that's in a different room or one that's in a neighbor's house or, or whatever you want the one that's the closest you just pair with that one and then you can move to the next device and pair with that one that offers you some level of kind of security that you know what's being paired uh, to your devices so now it's time for a demo and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the brand new arduino esp32 that's recently come out and i'm going to use the carbon v3 now the carbon v3 i've reviewed that here on this channel it's an interesting esp32 board because it's made here in europe not in china and i'm also going to use the arduino nano which of course comes from uh, italy but they've both got esp32 chips on them uh, and so they can communicate with the esp now and so what I've got is I've got a potentiometer, a variable resistor, which is connected to the Arduino Nano ESP32. I show how to wire that up in my uh, review video of the Arduino Nano ESP32. And then basically the value is sent over ESP now to the Carbon V3 board. And the Carbon V3 board has an RGB LED and the value is converted into an RGB value. Uh, and then the LED changes color basically as you turn the variable is. And the important thing is neither board is connected to a local Wi-Fi network. They're doing this using ESP now without the need of a router. Now, if you're interested in reading that code, you'll find it in my GitHub repository, which is github.com slash Gary Explains, and then drill down to examples, ESP now on Arduino Nano ESP32.md. There's a file there with some information, including the code that you will need to get this demo up and running. That's it, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. You can follow me on all the trendy and not so trendy social media networks. Here are all the handles on the screen. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of video as well, subscribe to the Gary Explains YouTube channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.